But Shore, tell me about what you've been finding out on the ground in terms of your reporting about maybe there being some military involvement, police involvement, corruption. Where does that play a part? Well, it's a little bit of everything, and I've said it before, and I will say it again, that it's a cocktail of how Nigeria has been run in the last 40 years. I say, and I repeat here, it here today, that so many of the things that Boko Haram does in Nigeria and gets away with, uh, it's actually a small law enforcement issue. But because the government of Nigeria has not been running itself well, and the law enforcement agencies have been involved in corruption over the years, they've destroyed the agency of security, they have destroyed the country, they've dehumanized its people. You have every little problem in Nigeria escalates into a big thing. When we didn't have Boko Haram, we had the Niger Delta militants. As a matter of fact, a guy named Dukubu Asari is threatening as we speak that if Jonathan president does not become the president in 2015, they will render Nigeria ungovernable. Kidnappers in the eastern part of Nigeria has made it even impossible for people to bury their dead. So Nigeria is badly wrong. Corruption has ruined Nigeria. It has dehumanized its people. And these leaders are seen as people who don't love their people. They don't love the country. And that's why you see that uh, Dr. Uh, Okupe, when he was speaking, didn't even know where this is coming from. He said they are using force, they are using dialogue. But as we speak today, even the amnesty that they uh, organized has failed. Because the army and elements in the military do not want amnesty to succeed because this is where they make their corruption money from. Uh, the military, JTF, and the Niger Delta are involved directly in some form of corruption in what they call oil bunkering. They love this. They love Nigeria the way it is broken. And that is why citizens should gather together and face up to our reality. We have a bad leadership in place that can't get anything done. Dr. Kupe? Thank you very much. Uh, sometimes one cannot but be ashamed about how certain pseudo elites of Nigeria, like Shawere and Co., uh, castigate their own country and the, and the leadership of their own country. Uh, you know, having, I mean, being tucked away, far away in the United States, in the comfort zone, uh, it is a lot easier to, con to, to just condemn, you know, various governments and various administrations in your own country. Now, I remember very well, there was a time in Ghana where everything went down to, you know, to the most basic thing. P you know, poverty became ravaging and life became very difficult to live to the extent that you know people became displaced and they were moving away from their homes in Ghana they flooded all the West African coast especially Nigeria what I'm trying to say is that in spite of ravaging poverty Ghanaians did not take up arms against their people against their country they I agree that there's a lot of youthful unemployment but that enough that itself cannot explain the degree of devastation that Nigeria is facing from Boko Haram. You know, people cannot pretend to, I mean, not to recognize the influence of a new phenomenon that is going on in the world. It's a global thing. The Al-Qaeda thing, the, you know, the Islam, Islam, Islamist fundamentalism that is spreading like a wave around the Islamic states, you know, and, you know, uh, in places where Islam is very strong, cannot be underestimated. Okay. You know, these Dr. people Dayan. are ideological. You know, Dr. You know, I, mean, Dayan, you, you I have to ask you one thing said. to do. Yeah. Well, you know, we have a major problem in Nigeria with this insurgency, but the federal government of Nigeria is doing its utmost best to sort it out. And I believe that the Nigerian military has the cap and, and the Nigerian military and the security agencies have the capability to resolve this issue issues. But because right. we are, it's an internal Dr. insurgency, it, there's a need to, to have limited at a limited Thank you so much. There. Well, you know, uh, basically, you know, we're, we're, we're in a situation now where uh, the northern elites, the traditional, uh, the traditional rulers and, uh, you know, the opinion leaders in the north, you know, came and spoke very extensively with the press, Mr. Mr. President and seriously demanded and requested and pleaded for, you know, uh, some intervention in the form of uh, the willingness of government to grant amnesty to Boko Haram. You know, and this is the phase in which we are. Guarantees have been given that, you know, the, the northern leaders and the northern elites will be able to extract uh, a dialogue mode from the, from the Boko Haram. And the government is, I mean, put up, uh, the government has put up a committee to oversee this in conjunction with the leadership of the entire north. 
Now, it is hoped that this will produce results. But, you know, the resolve of government to end Boko Haram and, and, and the devastating effects, you know, in the areas where it is uh, prevalent is totally unshaken. And the government, is, you know, re retains the capability and, you know, the wherewithal to stop this dastardly act. To Dr. Okupe that, you know, I, I don't like when they make comparison between Nigeria and other countries that are broken. They never make comparison between Nigeria and other countries that are working. Because Ghana did not make $500 billion from oil by the time it had poverty. Uh, Ghana did not have the kind of population that Nigeria had. It didn't have the kind of land space, you know, the, the rivers, the seas, and, you know, the very, very, very progressive, uh, hardworking people that Nigeria had when Ghana went through all of that. We are saying once again that it is very convenient to accuse those of us who are trying to make Nigeria work that we are ensconced somewhere abroad. I mean, they, Dr. Doyo Kukwe forgot that when the military was ravaging the land, we were student leaders who were fighting on the ground. When the likes of Dr. Doyo Kukwe were all around doing deals, you know, with the military leaders and selling away Nigeria. I reported, and that's part of the problem, I reported on Doyo, Doyo Kukwe himself, Dr. Doyo Kukwe, having been involved in corruption. And that's why Nigeria is the way it is today, because he was detained for several months in corruption. See where he is. He's Dr. speaking Kupe, on behalf of Nigeria. Dr. Kukwe, I, I, I hear you laughing. I see you laughing. Jumping just very briefly. <laughs> because, you know, the guy that is talking to you is a huge joke. You know, he's a liar. You know, a man without any reputation. You know, people who collect money and just print, I mean, say anything, destroy people. You see, he's talking about corruption about me. You know, there's never been charges of corruption against You anywhere. were detained for corruption fact, by the EFCC. Know, I mean, this is what they do. They just, you know, they, can you please just shut up? This is what you guys see? do. You know, you just disparage people and, just, you know, and just uh, mess people up. Just because you have an online media, you know, if that does not give you right to, de you know, to destroy people's personalities and integrities. So, Dr. Kube, Dr. Kube, you know, what has this got Ghana. to do with correct. Boko Haram? You know, what I said, what I, what I said about Ghana. What has Sir? this got to what, do what with Boko Haram? What has this got to do with the issue with Boko Haram? This two and four exactly. that you're you know, doing. You that. Yeah. The truth of the matter, what I said about Ghana, what I said about Ghana was that Ghana went through a very hard time. And in that time, the people, the poor people, did not take up arms against their people. They did not become insurgents. They did not start to kill anybody. You know, that this Boko Haram, you know, that we are, we are having right now in the country are people who are ideologically motivated. You know, they are, you know, they, they are motivated by their religion. And right. it's not just in Nigeria. Doctor yeah, the sentence I'm, you know, the, the only one sentence I can make right now is that Nigerians should not despair. You know, government is doing its best and the government will continue to do, you know, what it needs to do to ensure that it overcomes this menace. And by God's grace, we will overcome it in due course. Thank you.